Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're finally starting the build on my little 47 amp. And I'm really excited about this. And we're going to start by getting the transformers mounted and figure out where all the iron's going to go, where we want to put the tubes. And I know we've kind of done a layout, but I want to go over that one more time and do some measurements and make sure that we don't make any mistakes because this is a pretty nice chassis and I'd hate to screw it up by not being careful. And I do think I'm going to show a, another step-by-step -step build. And this may be a long series, but I hope some of y'all enjoy watching me build this stuff. So let's just get to it. Okay, time to get started on the 47 amp. And I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't just a little nervous. This is a lot nicer chassis than I've ever used before. And about four times as expensive. So in the past, those little powder coated Hammond chassis, if I drilled a hole in the wrong place or, you know, butchered something, it was like, man, there's 30 bucks. Well, this was 120 bucks. And I got this from a guy with a handle buzz on Audio Karma that lives near me. And he had some of these fabbed up. And these are super nice. Nice, nice thick aluminum top that bolts down. You can see how, how thick the thing is. And the other thing that I have to take into consideration working with this is it does have this lip around the edge that you can't have like a transformer sitting where the bolt hole might be in into that lip. Or, you know, do something like that. It has to be sitting back into this open space. So I took a measurement of how wide this lip is. And then when I'm laying things out, I just need to make sure that everything is spaced at least that far away from this edge so that we don't have a problem there. And I'm going to lay this out how I typically do my tube amps. And one thing I'm going to do also is this power transformer is the multi-tap primary that can be used with 110 volts or 120 or 220 or 240 and you use a combination of all these different leads to get where you want to be well I'm only going to be using these four and I can't imagine I'm ever going to be using this thing outside the US which is 120 volts and so I'm going to cut these off you know leave a little bit out but Cut these off pretty short and heat shrink them off and stuff them inside the transformer bell so we only have these wires coming in the amp that we're going to be using to deal with. So that's something I'm going to jump on probably off camera. But normally how I do my amplifiers is I put the power transformer in this back corner and then I put the choke up here in this front corner like this. And again, I'll come back and do these measurements from the edge, you know, to make sure that it's spaced far enough away where I don't have a problem with the, the bolts getting in the way of anything. So it can kind of sit like that. And then I'm going to put the output transformers back here. Something like this. Now what I do want to do is go ahead and set the tubes on the chassis and make sure that they're where I want them from an aesthetic standpoint as well as to make sure that things are wired where we're not going to have any hum or noise from the component placement. So there's our beautiful 47 tubes. And normally, I put the rectifier tube over here, you know, between these two. But this rectifier tube is so pretty. I think I want to put it here and have, so I can see it. And then 
kind of evenly space these output tubes. So if I'm going to do that, it's probably going to be more like that. And I might want to move these output transformers over just a breath like that and not have this one just jammed up against this edge. And there's still, like, let me get something, something else to measure so I don't lose that, but, um, yeah, we've still got three inches between the power transformer and the output transformer, which is more than plenty. And I usually like to keep, you know, maybe 20 millimeters between the transformers. And that's something like that. So that layout looks nice. Then we have the 20... Seven tubes are going to be up here in the front. I think I'm going to put them... I'm not sure whether either directly in front of or maybe inboard like that. I think that looks kind of nice. Because the other thing that I want to be prepared for is if these 27 tubes don't have enough drive and we have to end up going to a two-stage driver... I want to be able to have room to put these 56 tubes. And I think with this layout, there's still room to put them like that if we need to. And then we have these big tall tubes. They're all in a line. And they're evenly spaced. And then, and mainly I'm doing this because I want to make sure of where I want to put the output transformers because if I put this over further and then center the tube on it we wouldn't have room for this 56 tube if we end up needing it and these can actually be brought a little further to the front if we want and then ideally I'm going to have the volume pot up here in this front corner and so there's enough room here for volume pot to sit before this tube if there's a problem and I don't think these tubes are going to be dissipating enough watts of power where the heat's going to be a huge problem where if it was a KT88 or a KT120 you definitely have to worry about the which way the plates are facing and all that stuff I think with this one you know it's going to be more about the aesthetics and like which like I'm probably going to have the, as you can see on this tube, there's like, you can see all the pretty internal stuff, but when you turn around the other side, it's just chrome getter. And I think I'd rather see the internal parts of the tube, so I want to have them face like this. Because guys, this amp is as much about aesthetics as it is about performance. I mean, if I was really looking for high performance, probably wouldn't be using 1930s vintage tubes. There's some modern tubes that are much higher performance than these are, but the whole goal of this was to use all globe tubes from the 1930s and have, you know, kind of a cool steampunky look. The other thing is there looks like there's enough room right here to have our little voltmeter. Let me go grab it. Yeah. I think there's room right there for it. And I'm probably not going to put this in until I'm completely done with the amp and know that it's going to work. So, like, if I don't need these two tubes, then this could be moved over a little bit like that. But if I do need the 56 tubes, then this will have to be put over there a little bit. I could also put this on the front. I haven't decided yet. And might even try to find a way to put like a really soft, you know, orange illumination on this meter that matches the glow of the tubes. So, like I said, this amp is as much about the aesthetics as it is about the performance. And so, I think this layout is going to work. So... Just to be careful and make sure I don't make any mistakes, I think I'm going to go
go off camera and mark all these spots for the iron. And I'll come back and show you, you know, how I finish up marking and all that kind of stuff. But I just want to double check all these placements before I start marking the holes. And in case you haven't seen my other videos, I'm a big fan of doing what I call direct marking. And what I'll do is hold down and then come in with a scribe and mark the center points of these holes. You know, get all four of those, and then I'll come back with this tool, which measures from the edge, and it has a little scribe here. And I'll come in from the edge and make sure that they're centered in both directions, and make sure all the holes are even, mark them, then come back with my little stare at center punch, mark the holes, and drill them. So we're going to do that, get these things nailed down where they're going to live, and then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to finish marking, drilling, and all that kind of stuff. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I figured out exactly where I want to put these output transformers. And so when I measured this lip that I talked about earlier, it was one inch. And so I went ahead and added a hundred thousandths of an inch, which for you metric folks, it's about 25 millimeters, that lip. And so we're going to go out to 28 millimeters or 1.1 inches from this edge. So I came in and made sure that we were that this tab was at that lip so we have plenty of clearance I don't want to I don't want to screw up and end up with it too close so then I measured from the edge to the center of this hole that came right out to 38 millimeters so we marked that on this little scribe tool and before I did that, I came in and marked the center of each of these tabs with my little scribe in the vertical direction. And I've got this gap where I want it, which I can't remember exactly what I set it at, but it's right at 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. So. I usually figure if I can put my finger between them, that's a nice gap. So we took these off. We came back with this tool and we scribed each of these lines like this so that we know that each of these holes is exactly the same distance from this back edge. So these things will all sit square. And now we're going to come in and mark these holes. It's going to be interesting to see what this material drills like. It seems to be pretty, some pretty heavy duty stuff. But the nice thing about it having this plate, you don't have to get up inside something to support the back side of it. And it's much easier to get a nice center punch mark and we can obviously be a little more aggressive too because we have the back supported so we're going to come in here and mark each one of these holes and then we're going to drill our pilot hole, and let's see what this material drills like. Looks like it's going to drill fairly easy. And I am going to pull a cutting oil on the, on the bit. And we're going to 
start each of these like this. And then we're going to set our transformer back up here and just make sure those look perfect and those look perfect and because it's a little thicker material I know people have been telling me you know go buy a drill press but I've just got so much junk in my house I just really don't feel like having some other piece of equipment that's taken up room in my house and we're not building a space shuttle I'm not threading these holes and so Although we may thread some of this later for some other things we're attaching, but for right now, we're just straight drilling through, so make sure that the bit's straight and drill through. And this is much easier material to drill through, even as thick as it is, than those Hammond steel chassis are. I think the guy that the guy that I buy these bought this chassis from. I think he lays everything off and out and takes it to a machine shop. But we're not doing that. Although I have thought about possibly seeing about getting like the names of the or the numbers of the tubes. And stuff all engraved into the top of this when we're done. And maybe even have my little skunky design thing actually engraved into the into the chassis. That would look really nice. So we're going to be using the hardware that came with these transformers. And pretty sure this is going to be metric hardware. And it looks like a four millimeter screws. So let's find the appropriate drill bit for that. Like I said, this material is actually thick enough where you could probably thread it for these mounting screws. But I'm going to just drill through and put nuts on the back side. Could try to go. Not sure if that bit's quite big enough. We can try it. We'll try the smaller bit first. And we can always drill it out a little bigger. And if you noticed, I'm only drilling these back holes right now. Because I want to go ahead and have the bolts through in the back side before I mark, measure and mark the holes for the front. We're taking our time and making sure we do this right. We don't make any mistakes. And let's see if that screw will fit through there. Yep. Perfect. back holes drilled and so we'll put the screw in the holes Just like that and center in those slots and then 
The next thing we want to do is actually I think I'm going to go ahead and screw these down or at least this first one down and make sure it's aligned front to back where I want it. and that it's straight. So we do not want to put these on crooked. You may notice I'm doing this a little more precision than I have with some of my other transformers. Where I said, eh, it holds a little sloppy, we can move it around. I want to do this one as nice as I can. So. This back edge to the center looks like 90 millimeters. Let's make sure to see what this other one looks like. Yep. So and this is kind of a, a cheap tool that I bought off Amazon. It's not quite as accurate as I would I would like, but I can set it to this one. And it seems to be it's just about one millimeter difference. So let's come up here and do a little mark from that direction, both those holes. And then put our transformer back down. Okay, so I can, I know I drilled these holes exactly to the end of this, so I can pull this forward in the slot and then mark the slot in this direction visually by the, the center of the slot. And there we go. And there's our two holes for the front. And there we go. And go ahead and do the two pilot holes here, drill these out, and then I'll do the same thing over on this side and mark these two holes and drill these out. And then I'll come back and show you how I'm gonna lay out the holes for the output transformer. Again, start the hole. Because if you get this part off where you're starting it, or the center punch was off a little bit, you can fix it from here. Once you drill through very far at all, then it's too late. So let's set this on here and see if all these holes look like they're lining up. Those are centered in the slot and those are centered in the slot. Perfect. So let me drill these off.
just like that. And then we can go ahead, again, we've already got this set. We can come up here and get this, this direction measurement from this back edge. And then, again, set the, set the transformer in here with a couple of screws. Pull it forward on this, against the end of these slots. And that way it makes sure that it's centered this way. Come in here. Mark that slot. Mark that slot. And we got our two cross, cross marks there. There's that one. That one. Come back, double check that these holes all look like they're where they're supposed to be visually. Then do final drill, and then we've got the mounting holes for our output transformers. And the next thing we'll need to do is figure out where the grommets need to go for the wires to go through and drill those. And there we go, we got all our mounting holes drilled. Well, that's it for this episode. We got the holes drilled for our output transformers. And in the next video, we're going to start working on getting the power transformer, the choke installed. And like I said earlier, really being careful, taking my time. I want to do a really clean, nice job on this one. With the previous builds, we were using a lot cheaper chassis. And I was, you know, Hey, if it's a little sloppy, if the holes aren't in the quite perfect place, no big deal. We'll just make them a little bigger, blah, blah, blah. Really trying to do this one as precise as possible because I feel like this amp is as much about aesthetics as it is what it sounds like. So, hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. And we'll see you soon for more 47 globe tube amp fun. Have a great day.